The compression test, we're going to start with the dry compression test. Now on this review, I want to start with, on three, two, one, we're ready to start. What I want to do is remind everybody, this is just a reminder that when you guys are going in for the first time to pull a spark plug out, you've got debris up inside of here. This debris and uh, that you have up in there needs to be cleaned up. How do we clean out this debris? Simply little carb cleaner here. And once that carb cleaner sets for 30 seconds or longer, don't be afraid to let it sit a minute and let it get nice, all that debris, that grease, let it get nice and soft because you need to blow it out into a rag. Please don't forget to blow it out into a rag so you don't have to breathe it or see it. Once you've got that cleaned out, the next step is to use some penetrating oil, a little penetrating oil, WD-40. Put a little WD-40 in there and let it sit for a minute. Once it's sat for a while, the next thing you're going to do is hopefully get a breaker bar or something and work that plug loose a little at a time. If you go back and forth and back and forth and after a quarter turn it breaks free, don't hesitate, just bring it on out. Go ahead and hand, if it becomes hand loose, then take it out. But if you continue to have resistance this way as you go loose, then keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until that plug comes all the way out. Now, one little thing I wanna show you guys, remember to use a piece of cut off air hose for both installing and uninstalling a spark plug. So now that we've got that, we're going to perform the dry compression test. Number one thing you need to do is get the right hose. That dry compression test has to be a one-way hose. It can't be a two-way valve, it's got to be a one-way valve. So I'm going to get that and one of the things I'm going to check is my spark plug reach. I better have the right reach because if I don't, I'm going to smash into this tester right here if it's a high compression motor. So I'm going to look at my spark plug, check my reach, and you can film it up on that TV too, it'd probably show. You can see the reach right there and it's just right. Okay, keeping that there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lubricate the spark plug compression tester. Always lubricate your compression tester. The reason is, is you don't want that thing to get stuck inside a spark plug hole. And do not over tighten it, just bring it in. It should, should go hand tight all the way in. You can kind of speed the process up if you want to go like that, that speeds it up. Again, this is all the tighter it should be. Take a look. I'm just going to go ahead. That's it. Just tell it stops. Just tell the hose stops. Now that I've got the hose in there, I've got the hose all set. I'm going to go ahead and put in my compression gauge. And I've got this one here. So I'll go ahead and install this other compression gauge, just like a quick coupler with a release. It's got a, it's got a compression release right there and it's a quick coupler. It goes in just like any other quick coupler. So now that I've got that, I can, I can set this up to where it can be seen, hopefully, where you guys can see it. Maybe not. Uh, I'll set it there for now. Okay. There we go, for now. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is come over here to the ignition coil. So here we go. If you'll bring that camera over here, I'm going to disconnect the positive side. This positive wire here, this red wire, kills the battery and the, the supply side to that coil. So it's no longer charged. That coil is completely dead. Do not disconnect the negative side because the coil will still charge as long as the positive side is still working. So disconnect the coil at the positive side. The other thing is, is pull all of your spark plugs. If you can see right there on that side as an example, every spark plug is been pulled. Why? Because you want that engine to roll over nice and smooth and even. And you cannot do that with spark plugs still left in the hole. Everybody's got that. So now I've got the spark plugs all pulled. I've marked all my wires as you can see. All my wires are marked, spark plugs are pulled out, and everything's clean, so there's no debris falling back in the hole. The next thing I'm going to do is take my throttle and open it wide open. That throttle is open because you want the maximum amount of air to go into that engine to get an accurate reading. 
The next thing I'm going to do is turn on my battery charger to full start because I want to have that engine crank over exactly the same amount for every cylinder. That means the RPMs have got to be the same. If cylinder number one is 250 RPMs, then cylinder number eight and six and seven and five have got to be 250 RPMs speed-wise to make an accurate reading. Now that we've got that, we're going to go five hits per cylinder. Watch that needle and I'll try to go five hits per cylinder. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five. There's five hits and we're about probably 130, 125. You can let the pressure off there again and always test twice. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Always double check your testing. And when you're done, you record that. That will be my cylinder number five right there. And that is all you got to do for a dry test. Next comes the wet test. Okay, ready? Next comes the wet test. Wet test requires transmission fluid, about two squirts or a teaspoon of oil. I go one, two. Two squirts inside the cylinder and I can, generally it doesn't matter, I can hook up the compression tester. But I don't want to put the gauge on it. The reason I don't want the gauge on it because it will fill it full of oil. But I can use the compression tester to redirect some of the oil that might spill out of that cylinder. Again, this can get kind of obnoxious putting these in. Now watch what happens here. I'll just take this down here and what I'll do is I'll put that in. I'll put the uh, quick coupler in the dipstick hole. And then I'll turn this over in case there's any spill over and I'll just bump start. And that's going to lubricate the cylinder. Now that the cylinder has got oil splashed up against the piston ring, splashed up against the piston, splashed up against the cylinder walls, now I'm going to go ahead and hook up my compression tester. And you're not going to see much gain on that, so here we go. I'm going to do another five hits, and this is called the wet test. Let's see if we got any appreciable gain. One, two, three, four, five. We're up to 150 roughly. So we went from 125 to 150. That's not enough to be a problem. That never is enough to be a problem. Okay? Just 125 to 150, not a big deal. Okay, therein was what we call the wet test again. The wet test, the dry test. The wet test is for testing bad piston rings. The wet test is for testing bad pistons. Wet test is for testing cylinder walls that are scarred and got uh, uh, air leaking past them. Okay, now that that's done, we are going to move into what's called the leak down test. The leak down test is a test that we use to identify specifically where a problem is. Is it a valve? Is it an intake valve? Is it an exhaust valve? Is it a cracked block? Is it a bad head gasket? What about a water jacket problem? Where do we go and how do we test it? So the first thing I'm going to do is find top dead center. I can do that fairly easy. If I want to redirect, I got oil in there, so I'm just going to kind of feel for the exhaust stroke. I could, do you hear that air coming out? That's the exhaust stroke. And I put that there so it wouldn't blow oil all over the camera. Now I'm going to go ahead and undo this just a little bit. And now I'm going to show you how to find top dead center. And it's easy as pie. And again, this is not with a compression test. This is done with the leak down test. I'm going to get a screwdriver and I'm not going to wedge that screwdriver into the cylinder. I'm going to make sure I take hold of that screwdriver and don't let it scar the cylinder wall. So here I go. Now that I know I'm on the compression stroke, how do I know? Both of these valves are closed. This is the exhaust valve that goes to the exhaust pipe. This is the intake valve, goes to the intake manifold. Both valves are up, both valves are closed, both valves are on the compression stroke. Now comes time to find top dead center of that piston, so here I go. Watch the screwdriver very carefully, and you will see that screwdriver go up until it doesn't go up anymore, so here we go. It's going up, up, continuing to go up. You can't see it, but I can feel it. Now it's starting to go down again. I'm going to go ahead and go back the other way. 
just a little bit. I can feel it going down, so here I go. I'm gonna go back to, and remember, you better be on top dead center. That piston will go back down again on you. So here we go. Yeah, you wanna hold that. Tell me if that's going down or up. Here we go. Mm, that's down. So I'm gonna go back the other way until I get up. up. That's about top dead center right there. Quit going. Remember, don't wedge your screwdriver in that spark plug hole. Now, again, we're gonna hook up the unidirectional leak down tester hose. We're gonna hook up right here. All we're gonna do is go ahead and screw that into a clean spark plug socket. Here we go, clean spark plug socket. And these kind of get a little, little temper, these get a little bit, I don't know, fussy about getting the threads right on these. But once you get them, they'll go fairly easy. Again, it should go in by hand all the way. Now, now that I got that in, I'm gonna set my, my gauge up. Watch what I do when I get this gauge set up. First off, I've gotta hook it up to Shop Air. Shop Air is right here. So we're gonna film this. Go ahead, I'm gonna set that up. And you can show it on the TV, if we can show it there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust it now. This is the ingoing air, this is the outgoing air. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set it all up. So here I go. I'm gonna go ahead and get to my set point. Right about, I'm turning it to the right until I get right to my set point. I'm perfect, right there. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it right into here like this. And I can see that I'm leaking to a moderate amount, probably about maybe 50%. You can see the air going in. You can see that I'm leaking a moderate amount to 50%. You can tell that I'm leaking somewhere. And if you take the camera, you can actually listen to it. And where I'm gonna be leaking is right out the dipstick hole. The dipstick hole is telling me I got bad rings, I've got bad cylinder walls. You can actually hear it. Or if you take the camera over here where you pour oil into the valve covers, you can hear it coming out where the oil goes into the engine. You can hear it. And that's pretty important to know that. Now, here we go. We're going to close this out with the last of the... Uh, instructions on exhaust and intake here we go now I'm gonna go ahead we're on the compression now we're going down on the power stroke look at the valves and watch one of those valves open exhaust valve here is open see it opening now that exhaust valve is opening and you can hear it the air rushing out of there now we're going to go ahead and close the exhaust valve. Maybe. I'm going to get my cheater bar because I need a cheater bar to do it with. Now we're going to go ahead and get the intake valve. Again, the intake valve. Here we go. And now you can hear it coming out of the carburetor. Why? Because that intake valve right there, you can see it going down is opened up and you can hear it coming out of there. Now if it was a cracked block, it would come out the water pump hole. Okay, so I want you guys to remember that rings are gonna come out the dipstick or out through here. An intake valve is gonna leak out through here, the intake system, or an exhaust valve that's stuck or bad will leak out the exhaust valve, okay? So, last thing I want to do today is show you guys one more thing, and that is, before you start, establish what direction the engine is going. So if you want to put that camera up on the TV, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you look at this thing right here, it's called the rotor cap. Alright, and then you look at this and you see the main engine here. You want to decide which direction it's turning. So if you look at the rotor cap, you can see the rotor cap turning this way, and if you look at the engine, you can see it turns clockwise and the rotor cap turns clockwise. Make sure you establish that before you pull any spark plug wires. You make sure you get that done. This is the rotor cap. This is the distributor cap. 
This is inside the distributor cap. They're called towers inside of there. That's where this part of the rotor cap right here, that little pointy thing right there, spins around inside of there and distributes the spark to each of the spark plugs. Now if you want to look and see how this works, you can see the valves opening and closing. And take a look at the gauges. Okay, hang on. Watch the gauges. Everybody see the action that we're performing there? And notice how lumpy it sounds because we're coming up against compression. Okay, that ends the compression, dry, compression, wet, and the leak down testing. So...